is a mentor and guide to many research students and interns. He has worked in Big okay. Four and served as a Honor. faculty member at the Indrakrast okay. Institute Honor. of Information Technology, IIT Delhi. He is currently an additional director with the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. He has delivered over 150 talks, including keynotes, and has published more than 60 technical research papers. He is the author of the best-seller book, Cyber Unsafe, available on Amazon. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy and cherish the knowledgeable lecture by Dr. Gaurav Gupta. Sir, please. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And um, you know, first of all, I would like to thank NFSU as well as all um, DFS for giving me this opportunity to share my experience with you. Um, I will talk about a very simple, um, you know, real-world problems, uh, which probably is going to pose a lot of challenges in front of student sex. So this talk is primarily facing towards students and researchers that what kind of problems you want to take up and you know how you can make a difference in terms of solving the real world problems which are going to be faced by digital forensic community so so you know i have uh, experience in digital forensics i am solving problems in cyber security and digital forensics and this has been a compilation of things which i have experienced on which i am working my students are working and i want you know startups and uh, students and researchers and academia to work on so that we can save lot of forex Today what happens is we buy tools, we buy technologies which are not developed indigenously and that's where a lot of uh, forex goes out of the country, we lose out of lots of money. If we invest and develop these solutions, this will help us in long run. We can actually export the solutions developed here and this will make a difference uh, you know, in terms of uh, solving crimes more efficiently. So, so one of the biggest problem, according to me, is finding a problem what to solve. You know, we, we, we don't know what to solve. Students find it very difficult. They come to teachers and, you know, they spend a lot of time in finding out right set of problem. And that is something which I thought I will discuss. Right problem basically requires, you know, it should be easy to solve. At times we take up a problem which is very difficult to solve or we may not have resources. So we need to, as a researcher, develop, identify a problem which probably you can solve easily, but it is a high impact problem. It should make, you know, it should, it should not be a problem where you're not, it is concerning only few people, rather real world problem which is having high impact. And we have to develop an efficient solution because many times we develop a solution which is bulky, it does not, you know, people don't want to use it. So these are some of the characteristics which should be there in a problem which I'm going to discuss. So, Again, you know, I di divided these two things uh, that, you know, if you see around you what have changed in, and what have not changed in the last two decades, there are many areas of forensic science where a lot of development has taken place, whereas some of the things have not changed. They are as they were there two decades back and still nobody has done anything on those. So those are some of the areas which I think should be focused because those are low-hanging fruits, right? They are very difficult to find. But, but has change is very easy to find. You know, mobile forensics, a lot of things have changed. We have seen, uh, you know, in document science, a lot of things have changed. But then there are certain things which have not seen any change, right? So you may think in your mind what has not changed because I'm going to discuss uh, some of the things which are there. So we have seen technology converging. You know, uh, our, our iPad or a phone, today is our camera, it is our diary, it is our watch, everything is there together. So convergence is happening. Lot of change is coming in digital technologies, right? So that there will require a lot of forensics, but you know, some of the things like ceiling fan, it has not changed. You know, 20 years back, it's same three blade ceiling fan, which I have seen. Similarly in forensics also things have not changed. The QR codes, have you seen QR codes? The first QR code you saw and is same what you saw today. There is no change, no next generation which has come there. Right, imaging, which is the basic fundamental principle of uh, computer forensics, where you make bit by bit copy of the data from a storage media to a new storage media. That forensic imaging process has not changed at all. It takes a lot of time before you have to start a case. You have to spend six to eight hours imaging a storage media into a forensic image. So there is something needs to change. There's something needs to, you know, we need to do something about it. And I'm going to discuss what are those. Security feature of documents. So if you see, 
all the security features they are incorporated using some special method like there is a watermark there is anti-aglo printing or you know security thread all those require some kind of additional effort to put in place and for detecting and investigating also you require something special so can we not develop a security feature which is printable by a printer which can be detected by a mobile phone we don't require any sophisticated devices so technological changes today empower you you don't need lot of resources you can use let's say you know um, uh, the camera of a, of a smartphone which is very very high end today and image processing capabilities you can use those to solve lot of problem statements and i'm going to discuss some more going forward um, you know Q, uh, you, we have uh, ocr you know ocr accuracy is never 100% can we do something to make it 100% accurate we have not done anything we have not thought about it right uh, we our solutions are costly they are bulky they are not efficient i have not seen any forensic solution which work on a mobile phone most of them require some specialized equipment so can we port solutions to mobile phone so that we can carry them anywhere and can do investigation that kind of thing is something which students can take up that would be next generation forensic solutions right everything synthetic you know today is the uh, era where you can use technology to make anything synthetic i was uh, you know attending sessions yesterday people are today developing synthetic audios synthetic videos synthetic images which are very very difficult to detect through existing technologies so deep fake videos deep fake audios will bypass conventional tools so what can we do how can we make use of artificial intelligence to develop solutions which can detect the the problems created by the miscreants or the criminals using technology so these are some of the key ingredients which basically should be kept in mind when we are choosing a problem and we are trying to solve it right <clears throat> so my first problem statement is around that only that we need some kind of graphical user base practical extremely lightweight efficient solutions to detect synthetic videos so today you know i'll show you a video here uh if it works sorry how do i play it so this is a video where you know you might have seen on whatsapp and you know it was circulating where you know in real time the face of the person is being changed you know sometime it's virat kohli sometime it's an actor sometime it's a normal person so we have extremely high quality artificial intelligence based tools which can change videos audios or can generate synthetic audios so what i can do today is i can take your video of old video and i can morph it using technology where you will say something which you have never said i can record your audio and i can put that audio into a way that you are saying something which you never said same is the case with handwriting and so on right how do we solve these kind of problems we you might have seen chat gpt which is an ai based engine which can do lot of things and that will be used for doing lot of fraudulent activities how do we develop solutions to solve and detect and fix the problem posed by artificial intelligence technologies that is something which is important and we should actually work on this this is the right time we take up these kind of problem statements then you know more data in qr code qr codes have some data right they have security applications also lot of frauds are also happening using qr codes what happens is if you want to put more data in a qr code the size becomes bigger and density also becomes higher that's where if you see the aadhar card the qr code on the aadhar card have your data including your biometric data and that is very dense and that's where the cost of printing of aadhar card is very high because as we put more data density increases size increases but can we do something so that we can have more data in same size qr code with same density without increasing density and that would actually make more uses possible for qr codes especially in security and forensic domain so we are working on it we have solved some of it so if you see here they are color qr codes they are not actually color they are multiple qr codes embedded together which have more data so if you try to scan them you know this has multiple uses it has one set of data which you can decode and there are three set of data which only specific application can decode if i take a photocopy of this color qr code that is also valid it will have some data which you can extract for one layer of data so now what i can do i can make use of these kind of qr codes to solve new problems 
we have QR code which has multiple information. If you scan this QR code from different distance, it will give you a different value. If you scan it from near, it will give you value A, and if you go far, it will give you value B with the existing QR codes. Here what we have done, we have used optics, mathematics, and QR code standards, and played around with various kind of patterns so that with the existing standard, existing software, we can have multiple data embedded, and one of the data may not be known to you, and that's where the security application of these kind of QR codes comes in. This one has double data, two data, and one, the previous one has three pieces of data at a different distance it was coming. Again, you know, we have CCTVs um, in ATM machines, right? Which is being used for doing investigation later on. If something has gone wrong, we go to CCTV footage and do analysis. But, you know, we have a lot of processing capabilities today. Why can't we do analysis of CCTV footage in real time and our machines operate on top of it? For example, let's say if I go inside the ATM machine wearing a helmet, I am a criminal, I'm trying to withdraw money from somebody's account, I don't want to be recognized, I will put a helmet on. Today machine works. But if the, we can have intelligence in the machine that CCTV footage is being scanned in real time, and if no face is detected, machine should not operate. I can detect guns and knives using an object detection image processing technique. Now, let's say if I put gun to your temple and ask you to withdraw money, you will do it. But I can, in real time, process that there is a gun and there are more than one person, I can make sure that machine does not work, I can generate an alert to law enforcement agency, I can send out alerts to police, and that's where we can actually solve this problem. It's a very easy problem. Any student can take as a BTEC project or a master's project, where you develop a tool which can integrate CCTV real-time analysis to the ATM machine, and you can actually solve a real-world problem. Right. Print, as I told, can we have a sec printable security feature? I don't want anything special. I don't want any special method of embedding a security feature. Can I make use of normal printer and design a new security feature? This is a problem statement I'm working on. So, so this is something you can read. Try to read it fast. It says, I could not believe that I could actually read what I was reading using the incredible power of the human mind. According to the research at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order the letters of the word are. The, the only thing important is that the first and the last letter be in the right place. The rest could be a total mess and you can still read it without a problem. This is because your mind, human mind does not read everything as a whole, but it reads the first and the last letter. And, you know, we thought that it is very difficult to read. So human mind is very intelligent. We are very creative. We don't, we, we, you know, we avoid a lot of details. And that avoiding of details is being exploited by criminals. What they do, you know, they use lookalike websites. You know, I'll show you an example. If you see here, any issues? Any issues with these websites? The first one is a shopping website in Russia, genuine website. The second one is not Yahoo, it is yah00.com. Third one is not sbi.co.in, it is sbl.co.ln. I and L look same to the eye. So as I showed you in the previous slide, human mind, because of being intelligent, ignores a lot of information. We assume things because of our intelligence. And same thing being used to do a lot of phishing frauds. So what can, can we develop some kind of a plugin which will sit in a browser, which can detect whether there is a lookalike characters being used of the popular websites. It would be very simple, but very effective solutions, right? So these are some of the things I thought I'll discuss. Uh, this is like, you know, uh, shopping related fraud where your OTP is asked over the phone. Lot of people fall for it. What we can probably do is the shopping website and the bank, they both know who you are. For example, if I'm placing an order from Amazon.com, using your card, from where I'm ordering, the IP will tell which location I'm ordering from. When the SMS will come and I'm, let's say, in Delhi, so my latitude and longitude will be known to telecom service provider. If these two are combined together, it's a service uh, which telecom service providers offer. So what you can do is you can actually make a solution which can be used by e-commerce websites and banks where these two information is fast in real time. And if they are not in same place, transaction can be stopped. It will have impact for genuine people also of 1% who are sharing, uh, you know, OTP and uh, family members who are not in the same place. But 99% of the frauds using OTP can be stopped by this kind of a solution. 
next is imaging as i told forensic imaging has not changed can we develop a next generation intelligent imaging where i do imaging leveraging some kind of analytics artificial intelligence and the common things which are having multiple copies for example a same movie clip is there on my laptop 10 times which is having exactly same data so apart from metadata and the slack space the actual part which is replicated can be using ai and using a next generation hashing technique can be removed and only one version will be stored and we can develop next generation hashing technique and next generation intelligent imaging which will help you in terms of speeding up your for, uh, forensic investigation time so so you know storage media we are seeing uh, we used to recover data from magnetic medias like hard disk and floppy drives and you know cd's and dvd's but if i store data in today ssd you know if you delete data from ssd recovering deleted data from an ssd is very very difficult right because those are designed keeping in mind that that you know you you should not be able to recover data all these companies starting from cell phone company maker like apple and samsung and the you know solution makers like who are making storage media they want data not to be recovered because of the competition reason but the impact is coming on digital forensics mobile forensics is becoming almost impossible so we need next generation storage medias next generation operating system next generation mobile forensic solutions using some kind of a new paradigm where we enable these devices to help in forensic investigation we should put forward that thing in the design itself which is not happening otherwise what will happen most of the cases forensics will not be possible and that will be a very bad scenario we need to do something now so that we make sure that digital forensic investigation not to a standstill in the future right so this i am skipping this i have discussed so I, so this is also interesting so you know psychology of a criminal you know criminals have this particular way of doing things we have used psychology in various other domains of forensic science but when we are designing digital forensic solution we must also leverage psychology of the criminals so technical solutions when relied and combined with psychological thinking and the creative way people exploit uh, digital devices if we combine these two our solutions will be more effective chances of our getting data will become higher it's like it's like if you come let's say if i am a criminal and if you come and uh, so do search and seizure at my place you know my computer whenever i am doing any crime i am putting a new hard drive after doing the crime i am taking it out and putting it into let's say false ceiling or i am you know wrapping it up in a water tight thing and putting inside a fish tank so there are disguised places so let's say if you come and seize all the media you will get whatever you will get and there will be no evidence so you must know how criminals think what they do and exploiting that you should design your search and seizure method investigation method even the technical solutions and there is lot of work which is happening worldwide in this area so again you know we have seen in exams people cheat you know uh, when entrance exams are there they have you know some kind of uh, telecommunication device you know hidden in the shoes and a small bluetooth device in the ear which is non discoverable i can have a hidden bluetooth network and it's very difficult to find out let's say in a, in a room of 50 people who are giving exams who is cheating you, without proof you cannot ask somebody and do some kind of you know search so can you develop some kind of a sensor some kind of a device which can find out which are the bluetooth devices operating in room this will be very useful for stopping espionage let's say there is a high profile meeting of a vip is going on one person is snooping and leaking information this will be very useful for that also so can we develop like like we have metal detector a bluetooth detector which can find out exact location within a room with precision that okay this is a person who is using bluetooth although he is using bluetooth which is non discoverable hidden and that kind of thing you know there is no solution for that for right now so this is something which i think could be a good solution i've also written a book as told by ma'am cyber and safe this is basically about cyber crime awareness it has short stories which talk about various things which can go wrong for a common man and how cyber crimes happen and it also contains some of the ideas some of which i am discussing today in the interest of time i will only have one last slide where i'm giving you some tips which which will help you avoid lot of crimes there is a option in your phone that you can put a sim pin you can put protect your pin, uh, sim card with a pin so that if somebody steals your phone 
he should not be able to misuse your SIM because what will happen otherwise is the criminal will take out SIM from your phone and put into a new phone and install WhatsApp. So your WhatsApp will start working there, right? There is uh, you. Let's say you have Google Maps running on your phone. In that case, your phone never locks. So if somebody snatches your phone and your Google Map was on, your phone is basically unlocked. So if you physically lock the phone after switching on Google Maps, it actually locks. So that is something which you should do. Aadhaar is being misused because your Aadhaar is linked to your bank accounts. So uh, you know there, there is AEPS, uh, which is Aadhaar Enabled Payment Services. Now what happens is criminal take your Aadhaar number and corresponding uh, you know fingerprints. Let's say if you have bought property on the property papers you have your prints and Aadhaar number and they take this from the registry and then try to misuse and take out money from your account. Net banking you know is being misused. If I if I get details of your card I can do international transaction without requiring OTPs. So what can you do? You should go to your net banking, make sure that you disable international transaction, put a limit on your card. These are some of the things which can help you safeguard, right? Uh, your data, you take backups and you keep backup in a hard drive and that hard drive in your laptop bag and if you lose your laptop bag, your backup is also lost. So make sure that your backup is always away from your source. If you take backup of a laptop, keep it in office, backup of an office device should be at your home and shed the data which you have, your, you know, your boarding pass to Amazon parcel box, everything contains secret information. And you know anything which you are uh, wasting or throwing away can be used to extract information to do cyber crime against you. You should ensure that any of your garbage is shredded so that useful information cannot be extracted from that. And all the social media websites store information about you, anything and everything you have done. If I ask you what were you doing same time one year back, you can't recall but Google timeline can. So if you go to uh, takeout.google.com it will have you know 10 to 15 GB data about each one of us and if I get access to your account I can download it and I know everything about you. So what should you do? Frequently go to takeout.google.com and all other social media sites where there is an option that you can download this data offline and then delete it from there. So that somebody getting accidental access to your account should not be able to profile you. Otherwise they can actually understand completely what you have done, what you have searched, what you ate, how much you paid all information, all GPS location you have been to and so on. So there is a lot which we can change in our digital life, our digital etiquettes, the way we use technology to make sure it becomes difficult for cyber criminals to do fraud against us. And those are the things also written in the book. With this I would like to stop. I help students and I mentor students uh, solve problems. In case you are interested you can always reach out to me. I will be happy to mentor anybody who is interested to work in the area of digital forensics and cybercrime investigation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for enlightening our August gathering.